Hear these words of scripture. At the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth because God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name. Let every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. And friends, it is for that reason that we pray to the Father through the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, the name for which every knee will bow, and the name which God has given all power and authority. Friends, we come before the Lord tonight with confidence, knowing of his great love, especially this week as we look forward to recalling Jesus' death for us but not just his death for us, the power of God to raise Jesus from the dead for our sakes as proof of his victory, that sin has been paid. Welcome, friends, to St Andrew's Cathedral. My name is Chris Allen. I'm one of the ministers here, and it is a joy to be with you, particularly this holy Wednesday night. Friends, if you are visiting with us, tonight at the cathedral. It's particularly great to have you here as we come together at this healing service to pray for one another. If you are visiting with us, we want you to know that it is our hope that you feel comfortable, that you feel safe being here, that tonight is a great joy as we praise God in song, as we are nourished and fed God's word. 
as it is read, as it is taught, but also tonight we will pray. We will come before our God and we will ask. We'll ask for our health. We'll ask for our friends. We will ask God to do amazing things in our lives and the lives of others. And if you would like someone to pray with you, it will be our privilege to pray, to sit with you a bit later in the service and to bring your needs before our Heavenly Father. We do hope you feel comfortable. Uh, if at any stage you'd like a drink, there is a cup of tea and a cup of coffee just over here to my right, and one of us will serve you. At any stage in the service, if you feel uncomfortable, you're able to come just over to, up to the front here where one of our team members will be able to assist you. But we do hope that you will be able to stay with us for the next 60 minutes or so as we praise God, as we are taught by God's word, and as we pray to God. We're going to do that right now. And Serena, who has been a long-time member of this ministry, Serena was a student minister here with us at the Healing Service and is now on staff here at the cathedral, particularly ministering to our Chinese community. And it would be wonderful if you would pray with Serena now. Thanks, Serena. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for understanding our feelings and being with us through different seasons of life. This week, we especially remember Jesus' journey to the cross. Thank you, God, that you understand our stress, helplessness, and loneliness. It's because you have also experienced the betrayal, the abandonment, and humiliations of those you love. However, because of your love for the people and your obedience to the Lord's will, Jesus, you willingly went to the cross to atone for the sins of those who rejected, insulted, and humiliated you. The Bible reminds us that our Savior had to suffer and only then enter into his glory. The Bible also tells us if we are the children of God, we also share his sufferings in order that we may also share in his glory. Thank God for making us aware that suffering is a part of Christian life. Teach us to stand firm in our trials Help us to pray and trust you like Jesus in his sufferings. Please open our heart to see your will and look to the power of the cross so that we may glorify your name by persevering to the end. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. time to sing. So uh, you'll find this song number one in your service sheets there, O oh, Worship the King, All Glories of Love. Please join us singing.
Well, it's my privilege to welcome you here tonight, all of you here and those at home watching on whatever it is, YouTube. Oh. Welcome. And uh, I'm just going to read some words, uh, the writer of the Gospel of Matthew saying, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. So for all people who've come here tonight in that group, welcome, a big welcome to you. And I'd like to add to the writer of the Gospel of Matthew, come all you who have happy hearts and want to share the reason for your joy. So to you I say, welcome to, a big welcome. And some of you have been coming here for a long time, I know, uh, perhaps I think a few months ago I said perhaps a thousand times. There may be someone here who's come here a thousand times. I've calculated it, maybe two thousand times. That's a lot of times. Uh, for me, it's only been uh, my 11th year, so uh, and uh, it's just been wonderful coming here. And I encourage those at home who haven't been in, come on in. Here you'll find a blessing. Here you'll find friendship. Here you'll find people who want to share Jesus with you. Um, but some of you may have come for the first time and as a very big welcome to you and some of you may have come from all sorts of places. Uh, it's customary for us to have a show of hands. Is there anyone here tonight who may have come from, say, overseas? Anyone here at all? I have to take my glasses off. No, no one from overseas tonight. Perhaps interstate and out of Sydney, anyone from there? No, we're all homegrown here. Or some people are embarrassed to put up their hands, but don't be embarrassed here for anything. And some of you may have come for the first time. Hand up if you've come. There's, we've got a few people here. Welcome. <laughs> There's going to be a welcome pack coming around to you, so just keep your hand up until you receive that, and uh, that will have a lot of good information for you. Now, it's also time when we sort of have a little break, we stand up, and uh, I encourage you to try and find someone you don't know, perhaps, and have a conversation with them. Though you two there can't talk to each other, okay? <laughs> find someone you don't know and have a little chat with them, and uh, music or someone will call you back to order.
Hello, everybody. Well, that was an extended welcome time. And this is going to be, I gave you an extended welcome time because we've got extended announcements. Now, I know that announcements are your favorite part of the service, but listen, seriously, I need you paying attention to these announcements because there's some important announcements. I'm not gonna tell you what they are, but there might be a pop quiz at the end. So you've got to pay attention, okay? But we're gonna, I'm gonna move through these really quickly. The first thing to tell you is that we've got lots of services this week because this is a very important week for Christians all over the world. Tomorrow morning, you might not be aware of this, but tomorrow is Maundy Thursday, Maundy Thursday, and there are two services tomorrow. There's one at 7.45, 7.45 in the morning, and tomorrow night, I think it's seven o'clock, um, is Holy Communion. So 7.45 tomorrow morning is morning prayer. It's a beautiful little service. If you're in the city in the morning, come here at 7.45. We'll just be sitting here in the choir. It'll just a small number of people. We've only had about 30 to 35 people most mornings all through this week. Uh, but a really wonderful service. Uh, our very own Jonathan Adams is leading tomorrow's service and Justin Moffat, who is the minister down the road at St. Philip's, is preaching uh, tomorrow morning, 7.45. Tomorrow evening is Maundy Thursday, and that's Holy Communion evening prayer. And myself and the dean will be leading that service. On Friday, Good Friday, 10 a.m., is our service. And Sunday, which is Easter, 8.30, 10.30, and 5. So the regular services and the archbishop will be preaching at those services. So if you missed any of that or you don't know when the Easter services are, there are flyers just over to my right on your way out. You'll be able to pick them up with all the services. But I just wanted to let you know those two special services tomorrow being Maundy Thursday, 7.45 in the morning here for a short half hour prayer service and 7 p.m. for our uh, evening prayer, which is a very simple service, but it's Holy Communion tomorrow night. On Friday night, Good Friday night, we have a really special event here in the cathedral. It's held annually, it is Messiah. And if you've never heard Handel's Messiah, you are missing out. Uh, Handel's Messiah is an oratorio. It's, we'll have a full choir and a full orchestra here in the cathedral. It's a ticketed event. The tickets aren't cheap, but they're not expensive, but it's really wonderful to hear Messiah being sung in the cathedral, which, I want to say to you, I've heard Messiah lots of times. I've heard it at the Opera House many times. But to hear Messiah in a place where Christians worship, and Messiah is all Bible. It's all scripture set to the most wonderful music. And so that's on Friday evening here in the cathedral. And uh, whether you buy an expensive ticket or a cheap ticket down the back, it doesn't matter because you'll be able to hear those beautiful words being sung and there are flyers just over here telling you all about that. There is a QR code in which you might use, I think it's actually in your program. No, it's not in your program, but you'll have to get a flyer just over here. And there are lots and lots of tickets available. Friends, I'm really excited to tell you that uh, our How Do I Forgive workshop is almost full. I think there are only a couple more spots. So if you are wanting to come along to this on Saturday the 6th of April, you will need to book in quickly because the numbers are capped. We will be running it later in the year. And Elizabeth Robinson, where are you, Elizabeth? Are you here tonight? No, you're not here. Elizabeth is running that. And, but if you've got any questions, come and see me at the end of the service. I'd love to tell you about it. It's going to be a terrific workshop. It's only very short. There's no cost and refreshments uh, will be served on the day. It'll just be a couple of hours and details uh, in your programs. I also wanted to let you know that our very own Richard has got his art show coming up on the 5th of April, and it is at Balmain, and I highly, highly commend that I've been to a number of uh, Richard's uh, exhibitions, and he's got wonderful art. Where are you, Richard? There he is over there. If people want to, see, want to find details for that, Richard, they can see it on page four, and all the details are there where that is. Our very own Richard has an art show. I'll tell you the other person we need to have an art show. It's Dean. Our, Dean is a painter as well. This congregation has two painters. 
And when you consider Richard and Dean, both painters, and then you add them together with Belinda, who ran an art workshop last year, we should have, we should have an art exhibition here for the part of the healing service, goodness. I hadn't thought of that before. Between Belinda, Dean, and Richard, there should be more artwork uh, involved in this service. I've got one more announcement. <laughs> I told you I had, lot, I've got a rule. If you ask Marianne, she knows I always say only two announcements per service because they're not paying attention to me anyway. <laughs> You're the only one who pays attention to me. Uh, our fi my final announcement is to tell you that we have a newcomers night coming up on April the 22nd. It's a Monday night, April the 22nd. It's in your flyers on page four. If you're interested in the healing ministry, the healing service, or Golden Grove, and you'd like a tour of Golden Grove, what is this place that people talk about at Newtown called Golden Grove? We have a night, six o'clock, 6.30, just for an hour or so. We have beautiful refreshments. It's worth coming just for refreshments. And if you're interested in becoming a member of the company called the Healing Ministry Centre Golden Grove Limited, I'll tell you all about that. But if you've just got general questions about the healing service, what do we believe in? Uh, how do I get involved? Any questions you might have, or you just want to ask me some questions, that's the night to do it. April the 22nd, 6.30 p.m., and there'll be some flyers over here about that. Friends, I'm so glad to say to you that's the end of uh, my notices. And I do want to say this to you just in conclusion, and this really is the important bit. If you're here tonight and something's happening in your life, if you're here tonight and you're struggling, if you're here tonight and perhaps you've heard bad news, if you've got a family member who's struggling or a friend, if you're just anxious and you can't sleep, why don't you hand it over to the Lord? Friends, we often talk about uh, powerlessness here, that we're actually powerless over people, places, situations, and lots of things in our lives. But we know that there is one who is not powerless, and that is God. And he is eager to hear your prayers. Friends, our commitment to you is if you're here tonight, we would love to pray with you. Towards the end of the service, we invite you to come forward and just be seated. It won't, you won't be on display out the front here. You'll be... Uh, very privately, just around the sides here, ladies praying with ladies, men praying with men. The people who pray, who will be praying with you, they're not professional Christians, they're not even professional prayers. They are people who've been where you are right now, and they have come here tonight to bring your needs to God. And so I want you to consider over the next 20 minutes or so, as we sing, as we hear the word of God taught, that you might take up that opportunity to have prayer at the end of the service, we'll be having that prayer. I'll announce it. And when we're having refreshments, and I hope you might be able to stick around for some supper, we have prayer with anointing with oil and Deaconess Lakeham, who will be praying with people in the front row, just here under the pulpit. Just come and take a seat, and she'll just be moving along the line there. You may have to wait a little while for that, but you will be ministered to and prayed for in that way. We're going to invite our musicians to come up and lead us in a couple of songs now on page five. Man of Sorrows and Jerusalem on page five and page six. If you would like to stand and sing and support our musicians in that way, that would be wonderful. Let's stand. Two songs uh, bearing in mind Holy Week and uh, Jesus going into Jerusalem to die. And of course, we remember his rising from the dead too. In the second song, there is a little instrumental where we reflect upon Jesus' death, his uh, sacrifice. Uh, just watch out and you'll see Margaret lead you in singing there.
Please join with me to read the first reading, which is Psalm 91, verses 9 to 16. And you'll see the words in bold. Please read those words with me. If you say, the Lord is my refuge, and you make the Most High your dwelling, no harm will overtake you. No disaster will come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands. They will not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the cobra. You will trample the great lion and the serpent. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. He will call on me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honour him. With long life, I will satisfy him. My salvation. Friends, uh, I just want to, some people uh, might be new here or have missed them the last couple of weeks. I just want to let you know that we are very thankful to have this year serving with us two new student ministers who are studying at Moore College. Marcus Robertson, who you heard preach last week, and I'm very thankful for Tim Perdue, who will be preaching to us tonight, as tonight is his first sermon in the cathedral. Uh, Tim is in first year, and as you heard a couple of weeks ago when we introduced him to you, he is from Northern Ireland, and so I'm hoping that his accent will be uh, beautiful to your ears as he explains God's word to us. And before he preaches, Matt is going to read the passage that he'll be preaching from, Romans chapter 5. Thanks, Matt. Today's reading is Romans 5, verses 1 to 11, on page 8. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance character, character hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. 
Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? For if, while we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son, how much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? Not only is this so, but we also boast in our God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now rec received reconciliation. Well, good evening, everyone. I want to begin by asking, where do you find your hope? Or should I say, where do you place your hope? One of the great things about this healing service is that it attracts people from an immeasurably wide range of backgrounds and contexts. But I think we can all agree that no matter your background, no matter who you are, one thing that we all have in common is that we are all trying to find our hope in something. Now, it's important that you don't misunderstand what I mean by the word hope. We all hope for things. For example, year in and year out, I hope that somehow the Irish rugby team will make it through the quarterfinals of the World Cup. But unfortunately, up until this point, my hope is in vain. You know, we all hope for things day in and day out, but tonight what I mean by the word hope is in what do you put your deepest trust? Where do you find strength to persevere? I know that there are many of us here tonight that are in the midst of a period of suffering. I know that there are many among us tonight who are lonely. I know that there are those among us tonight who are lost, depressed, sick, seemingly fighting a losing battle. If that is you tonight, it is to you that I ask the question, where do you find your hope? God's word makes it abundantly clear where we can find a hope that gives strength within even the most crippling of circumstance. A hope that is unchanging, unwavering, and even death itself has no hold over. So as we hear from God's word tonight, let's pray one more time that God in heaven will help us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, as we spend time now in your word, we pray that you would comfort us in our affliction. You would strengthen us in our weakness, empower us in our service of you, and bring glory and honour to the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. In his name we pray. Amen. Now, hope is spoken of throughout God's word. Over thousands of years, God proclaimed hope to his people through prophets, through priests and kings, and ultimately through his Son, Jesus Christ. I chose to speak about hope from tonight's passage for a very particular reason because it gave me hope in a time in which I had none. There was a time in my life that I felt I had lost all hope and that the suffering of this life was far too much to even try and persevere. But as I came across these words in Romans 5, the Lord in his mercy gave me a hope that changes everything a hope that pours immeasurable light even into the deepest of valleys. And nothing would bring me more joy for you to share in that hope with me tonight. So there's three things that this passage tells us about the hope that God offers. Firstly, what does God-given hope look like? Secondly, why do we need this hope? And thirdly, how do we obtain it? Paul the Apostle is writing to the church in Rome to encourage them in the gospel, the good news of God's salvation. Paul is a man who knows what it means to suffer. He knows what it means to be despised, betrayed, broken for the sake of the gospel. 
And with that in mind, in chapter 5, verse 2, Paul calls the Romans to rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Not only that, he goes on to say, but we rejoice in our sufferings. That's pretty straightforward, isn't it? Rejoicing in sufferings. The word rejoice in the original language actually means to boast. We boast in our sufferings. When was the last time that you boasted or rejoiced because of your suffering or in your suffering? It's completely counterintuitive. It makes no sense when you first read it. When suffering comes our way, when our stability or our familiarity is taken from beneath our feet, our natural response is to panic or to despair or lose all hope. And yet, God's people are encouraged to rejoice in our sufferings. Amongst the fear, the loss, the sickness, we rejoice. Why? Well, as it says, we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not put us to shame. We rejoice in our sufferings because of what we know. We know that through our sufferings we will obtain endurance, character, and ultimately hope. Why? Because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. God's people can rejoice in their sufferings because of the knowledge of God's love which has been given to them. Now, you may say to me, but Tim, that's all well and good that God loves me, that God cares for me, but you don't know what I'm going through. You don't know the pain that I'm facing. You don't know the uncertainty or the loss or the grief. Tell me, where is the love of God in that? And I wouldn't blame you for asking those questions. I've asked them myself. But praise be to God that I know now, because of these words, that the hope that God offers through his love far exceeds the weight of any circumstance. No matter how painful, no matter how heavy, no matter how seemingly hopeless. And why is that? Because although I am certain that there are some of you here tonight who are dealing with situations right now, that are more painful and more difficult than what I can begin to imagine, the reality is that the very worst of all of our circumstances that we must deal with, the most deadly, hopeless, and inescapable circumstance that we all must face is our own sin. Friends, the one true living God, the God of all love, the God of all justice and mercy, and righteousness. He created us to be in perfect relationship with him, to walk with him, to trust in him. And we have rejected and rebelled against him because we in our sin want to be the Lord over our own lives. And because of this, we have been completely separated from him. Are you suffering tonight? Have you been hurt or betrayed, let down by those who love you? Have you experienced the sting of death in your life? This is because through the sinfulness of humanity, the world has become subject to futility, evil, and death. In this life, there is suffering because in this life, we have separated ourselves from the sovereign, loving God. Now that is a circumstance worthy of despair. But friends, the good news, the great news, the hope that surpasses all circumstance is this. Verse 6, while we were still sinners, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. For one will scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person one would dare even to die. But God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Praise be to God. Our God is a God of justice and of grace. And in sending his son, Jesus Christ, to live the sinless life that we were meant to live, to die on the sinner's cross in our place, 
to pay the price for our sin, God shows his utmost love for us. And in rising from the dead three days later, Christ himself defeated sin and death and is now reigning as King of kings and Lord of lords. And we have a hope that not only gives comfort and strength in this life, but has defeated the grave and gives hope that is eternal. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. This means that no matter how hopeless a circumstance may seem, no matter the grief that cripples your heart, no matter the fallenness of this world, if you have put your trust in the saving grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, then you have been forgiven, you have been reconciled to God, and not even death itself has a hold on you. It means that even when you're fighting a losing battle, you know that no matter what comes your way, the sufferings of this present time do not even begin to compare to the glory that is waiting for you. In putting your faith in Christ, you have obtained an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfailing, kept in heaven for you. And we can rejoice all the more because of the certainty of this promise. Romans 8 proclaims that, for I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angel, angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers nor height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the hope that you who have been saved by the grace of God can live in. So how can we know this hope? How can we who are dead in our sin come to know an eternal, unchanging, God-given hope? Verse 1. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Faith. Life-giving faith. Put your trust in the life, death, and resurrection of the risen and reigning Lord Jesus Christ because, friends, the truth is plain to see. If you have not put your trust in the Lord, then death still reigns in you. If you have not given your life to the Lord, sin still remains your most deadly of circumstance. If you're not in Christ, then what hope do you truly have? So I implore you, do not delay. Trust in Christ, trust in him today, because there is a hope that does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured into our hearts. But if you have put your trust in the Lord, then you can rejoice you can rejoice even in your sufferings because the Lord reigns and because he will return. And even now, even here, he provides for you. He cares for you. He comforts you. I'll close with these words of hope found in Revelation 21, verse 3 to 4, that speak about the world that is to come when Christ returns to bring us home. Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning or crying or pain any more, for the former things have passed away. And he who is seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we rejoice that although we were dead in our sin and our trespasses, you sent your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to die in our place, that we may be given life and life eternal. We pray, Lord, that as we meditate over these words, that you would make real to us the price of the cross, 
but also the glory of the resurrection. Give us hope in this life and the life to come. In Jesus' name, amen. Dorothy and I would like to share with you a short song, the words of which are in your order of service on page seven. It's a song, as it explains there, as sung by the Roman centurion at the crucifixion of Christ, a man who came to see who Jesus was. from Psalm 86, verses 1 to 3, which you can find on the bottom of page 9 of this evening's service sheet. A psalm of lament and salvation. Hear me, Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and needy. Guard my life, for I am faithful to you. Save your servant who trusts in you. You are my God. Have mercy on me, Lord, for I call to you all day long. We now come to that time in our service where we can offer you prayer if you are here tonight and you would like someone to pray for you. In a moment, I'll ask you to raise your hand and one of our team members will come around to you and invite you forward. It will be men praying with men, ladies praying with ladies. It's very important you hear this, and also for our prayer team members, it's not conversation, it's not counselling, it's not hearing your confession, it's not giving you advice, it's not even sharing our own life experiences. It's praying to God. It's asking God to do what we can't do for ourselves. Friends, it's not a long time, it's a short time, but we will make sure that if you put your hand up, you will be seen in the next 15 to 20 minutes. As I said, it will be men to this side and ladies to this side. We ask that you would remain seated until we invite you forward. Uh, it may take a little while for everyone to be seen, but we will make sure you're seen in uh, the time before us now. And then we'll be ending our time by 
uh, another great hymn and a final prayer. And remember, at the end of the service, there is anointing with oil and prayer in the front row. If I could ask our prayer team members to come forward first, the rest of us, I would encourage just to bow our heads and spend the next couple of moments just in quiet reflection and maybe considering what we might bring to the Lord and what we might ask of him. But I'll ask our prayer team members to come forward and to be situated. And then I'll invite those who want to be prayed for to put their hand up and we'll bring you up one by one. If you would like to receive prayer, now would be the time to put your hand up and one of us, my, either myself or Marcus or Philip, will come down and bring you for prayer.
Friends, while people are still praying, I'm going to ask that the rest of us would pray for people who can't be with us tonight. These are people on this uh, prayer list that I'm going to go through who have contacted us, whether on phone or email or people known to others in the ministry here, and these people have asked us to pray for them. And I wonder if you would continue to pray with me and just echo these names in your own heart as we ask the Lord to do things for them, to bring healing and to bring life, to bring peace and comfort and strength. Let us pray. Our gracious Father, we thank you for your goodness. We come before you now and pray in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we give you thanks along with the heavenly angels and hosts who continually lift up your name. And we thank you for the wonderful news of Hannah and her new baby. We give you praise and thanksgiving for the safe delivery of Rebecca. We pray that Rebecca will remain healthy and well. We thank you that Marla has finished her tests and we thank you for the clean bill of health that she has received. We ask that you would complete that healing now in her body. We praise you for Gloria's treatment that it has been so successful. We thank you for the new energy that she has in her life. We thank you for Greg that he has responded well to his medication. We praise you for Vanessa's healing and for Jacqueline. We give you thanks for Susan and for the answered prayer. We thank you for the favourable result for Marianne. And finally, Lord, we give you thanks and praise for the good news we have heard from Christopher and his parents, Jonathan and Rebecca. We turn to you now, Lord, and we ask that you would extend your accustomed goodness to those who are known to us who suffer with cancer. And we pray for healing for Jason and blessing for him. We thank you for his confidence in you. And we thank you for the good news he has heard so far. Please, Lord, sustain him and strengthen him in body and bring healing to him. We thank you and praise you for hearing our prayers for Steve. And we pray, please, Lord, for a successful outcome to his treatment. We ask for Marion, who is awaiting an operation, and we pray for a speedy recovery. And we continue to uphold Peter to you, who is in respite care. And we pray that his chemotherapy would be successful and that you would restore him, give to him strength. Father of all mercies and God of all comfort, please, we ask that you would bless and heal Sev. We pray for Mary Ann, asking that there would be a successful outcome for her. We pray for Amy, that you would relieve her suffering and her insomnia. Please, Lord, bring healing to Mian. We pray for Cassandra, for healing for her. Take away her pain in her leg and her feet. We pray for fast healing and strength. We ask your blessing for David and for Peter, for Vanessa and Yola, for Sally and Peter, for Martin and Jonathan, for Jackie and for Kim. Please, Lord, give spiritual counsel, strength and blessing to Simon and Fabio, for Megan and Jonathan, for Philippa, for Caleb and Alyssa, for Amy, for Angie and Thashara, for Paul and Mary, and for all their needs, bring blessing to them. We continue to uphold Sarah and Leslie, asking that you would strengthen them. Particularly, Lord, bless Leslie in this bout of ill health, we ask, Lord, for your great blessing on Amelie and Devon, Fred and Unica, Matthew and Chantel, as they prepare for marriage in the cathedral. Bless their preparations, and particularly, Lord, bless them in their commitments to one another. We give you thanks for the life of Michael, and we pray for those grieving Michael's loss. 
We commend to your mercy tonight all who are awake. Doctors and nurses who tend to the sick, police, ambulance, fire and security services guarding us, those who toss and turn in pain and anxiousness, and those who only watch and wait. Let them know and welcome your sustaining love and use them in your great design for all our good. And we pray all of this in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Friends, I remind you again, there is a further opportunity for prayer in the front row. Just down here, Reverend Lakeham Ho will be praying and anointing people with oil, and you are welcome to partake in that ministry straight after the service. There is tea and coffee and refreshments being served over on your way out. And we do hope you might be able to stay around for a few moments to fellowship with us. We stand to sing our final hymn, a hymn that is well known to many of us. It is number four on page six. I cannot tell. Would you please stand?
gracious Father, we thank you for your good gifts to us. Please now, Lord, be present and protect us through the silent hours of this night so that we who are wearied by the changes and chances of this fleeting world may rest upon your eternal changelessness. And now, friends, the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you what is pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you now always. Amen. I'm sorry for two reasons. I'm sorry that we've run late tonight. But secondly, I want to warn you on your way out, the lights in the square are not on. I think it must be a daylight saving issue. So please watch out and take care as you walk through the square and I'll make sure that's fixed for tomorrow, uh, for next week rather.